Hey guys, welcome to Spec Transfer and to the second and final part of topic 3.3.2 gas exchange from the AQA A level biology specification. To watch part one, just follow the link top right. So let's continue where we left off in part one. In this video, we'll cover the structure of the human gas exchange system, as well as the essential features of the alveolar epithelium and how it is adapted for efficient gas exchange. We'll also look at the antagonistic interaction between the external and internal intercostal muscles, as well as the role of the diaphragm in facilitating ventilation. And finally, we'll also consider the effects of lung disease on gas exchange. So you need to know this diagram. As you breathe in, air enters the trachea. Be careful not to confuse this with the tracheae, which are found in the insect gas exchange system. The trachea then branches off into two bronchi, which lead to bronchioles, which lead to the alveoli. The diaphragm, internal and external intercostal muscles all work together to allow ventilation. So let's zoom in and look at gas exchange in the alveoli specifically. Oxygen diffuses out of the alveoli across the alveolar epithelium and the capillary endothelium into hemoglobin in the blood. Make sure you do not confuse epithelium and endothelium. It is the alveolar epithelium and the capillary endothelium. Meanwhile, carbon dioxide diffuses from the deoxygenated blood into the alveoli and is breathed out. Another advantage is that red blood cells slow down in the capillaries and are pressed against the capillary wall. This allows time for the diffusion of gases whilst also increasing the surface area of red blood cell available. And it also minimizes the diffusion distance for oxygen. Overall, this helps increase the rate of gas exchange. Finally, we need to consider how ventilation works. In inspiration, the external intercostal muscles contract, the internal intercostal muscles relax, and the diaphragm contracts. Therefore, the volume of the thoracic cavity increases and the pressure in the thoracic cavity decreases to below atmospheric pressure. Because air always flows from an area of high pressure to an area of low pressure down a pressure gradient, air flows into the lungs. Note that this is an active process, meaning that energy is required. During inspiration, the rib cage moves upwards and outwards. In expiration, on the other hand, the opposite happens. The external intercostal muscles relax, the internal intercostal muscles contract, and the diaphragm relaxes. The volume of the thoracic cavity decreases and the pressure in the thoracic cavity increases to above atmospheric pressure. Therefore, air is forced out of the lungs. This is a passive process, meaning no energy input from respiration is required. During expiration, the rib cage moves downwards and inwards. So in summary, oxygen moves down the trachea, bronchi, bronchioles into the alveoli. This movement happens down a pressure gradient. From the alveoli, oxygen diffuses across the alveolar epithelium, then the capillary endothelium and into the blood capillary. This occurs down a concentration gradient. Note the difference, concentration gradient versus pressure gradient. We also need to consider the adaptations of the alveoli to maximize the rate of diffusion of oxygen and carbon dioxide so that as much oxygen can enter the blood to reach respiring cells for aerobic respiration and as much carbon dioxide can be removed from the blood in order to prevent it from building up. So the alveolar epithelium is only one cell thick, which creates a short diffusion distance. There are many alveoli in the lungs, which creates a large surface area for gas exchange to take place. The extensive network of capillaries provides a rich blood supply, maintaining a favorable concentration gradient for the diffusion of oxygen and carbon dioxide into and out of the blood. Ventilation has the same effect, just on the side of the alveoli. 
It keeps the concentration of oxygen in the alveoli high and the concentration of CO2 low. Okay, so finally, the spec says we have to be able to interpret and evaluate information in relation to lung diseases. Therefore, I think it would be very useful to briefly consider what would happen if gas exchange were reduced for some reason and how this would affect the organism as a whole. Overall, most lung diseases reduce the rate of gas exchange in the alveoli. Less oxygen is therefore able to enter the bloodstream and reach respiring cells. Therefore, the rate of aerobic respiration is reduced, meaning that less energy is released and therefore people feel weak and tired. Great, and that would be all parts of our specification covered. Thanks guys for watching. Next time we'll be looking at digestion and absorption. See you then.